Hello, my name is Marie Contreras and I am the proud owner of Marie C. Pet Care. Nothing is more important than my family and my pets are part of the family in my house. For the last five years, I have dedicated myself to the world of pet care because I'm a pet lover at heart. I consider myself an environmentalist, an animal rights activist, and a staunch supporter of the scientific research behind proper animal care and welfare. My videos focus on pet care and tips for having healthy and happy pets. I hope you stick around and enjoy what I have created for you today. Does your dog love to lie in the warm sun? My little dog, Eddie, will stop during his morning walk when we enter a sunny area and he loves to sit there quietly for a few moments and bask in the morning sun. He genuinely soaks it in and has a look of true bliss on his face as he sits there with his head reaching up to the sky and his eyes closed. It doesn't take scientific research to see that he is having a truly fabulous moment. Many dogs love to lie in the sun for a variety of reasons. First off, it feels good. The anecdotal answer, especially for older dogs that may be colder or have stiff joints. The warm sun feels good on old bones. I agree with my little Eddie. It feels so nice to wake up most mornings, walk around a little, smell the fresh air, notice the new blooms, and feel the sun on my face. It is a lovely way to start the day. I'm grateful that my dogs get me up and out every morning to enjoy this luxury. But as with most things, there are scientific reasons to back up why we enjoy the sun on our faces. This is no exception. One of the reasons it feels good is that sunlight releases endorphins, feel-good hormones, like serotonin. Serotonin increases our feelings of calm and focus, decreases stress, and boosts our mood naturally. It has the same effect on our canine friends. So, it really does feel good. Some studies have shown a genetic cause for human-directed aggression in dogs with abnormalities in their serotonin brain receptors. Circadian rhythms. Circadian rhythms affect all mammals, but canine rhythms are slightly different from human rhythms. Daylight helps regulate circadian rhythms in all mammals. Circadian rhythms, which are a 24-hour daily cycle, are affected by the seasons as the days become longer or shorter. These critical cycles are responsible for maintaining our immune system and general feelings of well-being. Being awake and mobile during daylight has been shown to improve our health and our dog's health. These rhythms improve our feelings of well-being. New studies are coming out on the effects of circadian rhythms on mammals, and it is fascinating data. For example, did you know that sleep, hormone levels, brain activity, blood pressure, and body temperature are affected by the sun and circadian rhythms? This affects behavior, as well. This is one reason dogs' peak activity times during the day are mid-morning and early evening. However, dogs and cats' circadian rhythms are not as closely associated with light and dark as humans. Their rhythm cycles rise and fall every few hours, even after dark. This is probably tied to their natural predatory hunting behavior. The circadian rhythms are also responsible for the melatonin naturally produced by the pineal gland. Melatonin is produced by two factors in nature, light and exercise. Melatonin improves the quality of sleep and helps to regulate blood pressure. Vitamin D? Not so much. Our bodies synthesize vitamin D during sun exposure. But your dog's body does not work the same as a human body, and they get almost no vitamin D from the sun. They get most of their vitamin D from their diet and can overdose on vitamin D if there is too much supplementation in your dog's food. This is called vitamin D toxicity. Vitamin D is not quickly secreted in the urine. It is stored in the fat and the kidneys. Excess vitamin D can cause kidney failure. Processing the vitamin D found in food requires a digestive enzyme, among other things, to help process the vitamin D. Some health conditions like intestinal malabsorptive conditions, a couple of these are Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, interfere with this process. Skin cancer, five types of skin cancer affect dogs. The skin is the largest organ on a dog, and these types of cancer are common. Between 60 to 80 percent of skin tumors in dogs are benign. Definitely, get them checked out to rule out the more dangerous types of tumors with your veterinarian. Some breeds are more prone to certain types of skin cancer. I am not a veterinarian. So, if you see any new lumps, bumps, or unusual marks pop up on your dog, always get them checked out by a professional veterinarian. Any breed can get skin cancer. So be mindful of your dog baking in the sun excessively. As with most good things, please don't overdo it. Most believe 15 to 20 minutes twice a day is a good amount of sun exposure. So, if you are taking your dog out for a couple of walks a day, they are getting a healthy amount of sun exposure. If you enjoyed this video, nudge the like button. If you would like to see more like this, consider subscribing. If you would like to read the blog or check out my new book, I'm going to leave links to them in the description. Thank you for watching.